Hey guys, Watson here. For beginners, the map Splatoon 3 offers is probably one of the most confusing tools to understand. So let me help you slowly integrating it into your gameplay and show how it can be optimized for advanced players. Using the map properly will elevate your gameplay onto the next level since it can feed you so much information in so little time. Why take it from me? I've been playing competitive Splatoon for 7 years and became European and Vice World Champion along the way. If you enjoy the content, please consider to subscribe. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it, shall we? If you ever look at top players gameplay, you will notice how often and how quickly they use the map. For a trained eye, a quick glance over the map can reveal so much about the state of the game and properly integrating the map into all of your gameplay is probably one of the hardest things to master in this game. So I broke down this guide into 3 difficulty levels for you to start slow and easy to train your way all the way up to the advanced usage. The first and easiest way to use the map to get a general feeling on how to use it is to look at it each time the match starts. The opponents are still miles away from you and you can't be spatted, so I recommend starting here. After playing the same maps over and over, you will have nailed a basic rollout swimming to mids, which you could do in your sleep. This is where you wanna start looking at the map for a few seconds, since it offers so much more information than your own screen at the start of a match, that you can use to approach and start off a game in a more optimal way. First, obviously you can see all the weapons and kits being played. You can already see this from the starting animation, but it's always good to know what you're up against, to know how much space you can take. If they have some long range weapons, you have to approach more carefully, while without, you have more space to abuse. Secondly, look at the abilities your opponents run. This can give you a good idea of what playstyle you can expect of them. If they run Ninja Squid, expect them to play more sneakily and aggressively. If they run tons of Sub Saber, you can expect them to throw more bombs than usual. Take special note of standout abilities that can catch you off guard if you don't know that the opponents run them. For example, Stealth Jump, Drop Roller, Opening Gambit or Ninja Squid again. You really don't want to get surprised by the sneaky Ninja Squid use, I gotta tell you. Third, take a look at the enemy rollouts on the map by looking at their paint. You can see exactly where someone is going by their paint, since the whole map is unpainted. And also with the kind of paint, you can tell which weapon is going where. Chargers, for example, leave long narrow trails of ink, while blasters have bigger splashes. When you know where your opponents are going, you can position yourself accordingly, or, or even take more space when you know no opponents are coming from a certain angle. Using the map to look for enemy paint to see where they are is a crucial skill to learn when you want to master the map, and using the map in the beginning of a match, the way I described, will make your start of a game way better. Having mastered the beginner's level brings us to the mediate level. Using the map each time you died, respawn and get back into the fight. While being dead, you don't have much to do anyway, so why not take a good look at the map to plan your reapproach? You can ask yourself several questions. Is it safe to super jump and if yes, where to jump to? If not, which path should I take while I roll out into the battle again? Where are the enemies? You can see an enemy who stepped into your ink or took at least 0.1 damage on your map for seconds so you can locate where the danger is coming from. Other questions would be, where is my team and where do they need reinforcements? Which area should I try to contest next? Have there been any flanks as you could maybe see a trail of enemy paint on the flank path? What parts of the maps are covered in enemy ink that I should paint? Or is there even someone maybe trying to spawn camp me? During a match, it can get harder to pinpoint information than at the start of a match, where nothing is painted yet, since enemies now can hide in ink, and this time around, while swimming to mid, there could be enemies sharking and waiting for you, so using the map on your rollouts will become more dangerous, since they obviously block the rest of your view. But overall, that's a risk you want to take. Everything I just described will make your approaches back into the game way more efficient and after some time you get a good feeling for when it's safe to open a map for a second. And let's get to the hardest level, the masterclass, using the map actively while you play and fight. To make this easier at first, you can start using the map during downtimes, while you wipe your enemies for example, to see from where they approach next based on the ink that they lay down, or just take a short break of 2-3 seconds to use the map while a fight is going on elsewhere. While a teamfight is going on, the map can tell you almost all positions of the enemy, because while fighting chances are high, they took damage or stepped into your ink and are therefore visible on the map, or you can see where they are by their paint, or even spot flanks by suspicious paint on your side. The hardest use of the map though is to use it while you actively battle someone. If you damage someone once, you can see where they go behind cover with a short look on the map and adjust your play accordingly. Do they stay there? Keep shooting, try fall off shots or throw a bomb. Did they disengage? Think about if it's worth it to chase them, or just let them be. But you don't need to waste your time anymore thinking they could maybe still shock behind the cover they just retreated to. Or do they even approach you again? Then use the advantage of knowing where they come from from looking at the map 
to give you the upper hand in battle. Weapons with good fallout shots or huge area of effect damage that can kill people behind cover like Sloshos or Blaster benefit the most from that. These weapons fire slower anyway, which gives you a short opportunity that you can't do anything anyway. Like for example with the Dynamo Roller or Explosions, the top players actually look after a landed shot exactly where they need to shoot next to confirm the kill. Keep in mind you can even aim a bit while having the map open, as your inkling will shoot exactly the direction your little squid icon is facing on the map. This is by far the highest tier of map usage, so you're better off slowly incorporating the earlier steps before you get to this. That's it from me on how to incorporate using the map into your gameplay. If you have additional questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you haven't already, like, comment and subscribe for more content like guides, funny meme edits and epic montages. With that being said, have a good one, see you around guys, Watson out.